I never thought that I would be a bodybuilder. I guess I found veganism first. Health scare, borderline pre-diabetic. 10 years ago, I wasn't very fit. I would tell myself, don't be afraid. It's a worthwhile journey. Being able to think about how things change. There were injustices done to my people. There are injustices being done to animals. I'm not participating in that, or I'm speaking out about it. For me, it starts with the plate. Today, I would like to welcome our guest, Jamal Collins. A multi-time competitor with the International Fitness and Bodybuilding Federation, Jamal has won many competitions in bodybuilding, and today we will hear about his journey through veganism and how he got into bodybuilding. And we're really looking to find out what it means to be a vegan bodybuilder in this day and age. And with that, welcome Jamal. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's no problem. Um, yeah, how are things with you? Have you have you been training today already or? Uh, actually, no, today was kind of a rest day for me. Um, I did ah. go to the gym to meet with a client that I'm helping who also competes. Nice. Yeah, I did spend some time in the gym today. <laughs> cool. So were you kind of in off period season or you're not training for yeah. anything in specific? Um, so I'm always training. But, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my, my next competition is in June, so a little over 20 weeks away. Um, and, and with bodybuilding, there's never really an off season. Uh, you may not compete for a while, but you're always working towards building and growing and I see. just getting better. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping things taking over. And, yeah, I get that. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, I would like to start really by trying to understand what what your path was originally. What what was it that led you into bodybuilding in the first place? Because it's obviously a really cool sport, but yeah, what was your path into it? You know, I <laughs> I never thought that I would be a bodybuilder. Uh, this kind of happened at the suggestion of a friend who's also a fellow vegan. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I guess I found veganism first and it was kind of like this, uh, yeah, this thing that I transitioned into kind of later in life. It's, it's been, uh, almost seven years now. Uh, but I, I think, but when I turned 38, uh, I decided, you know, I'm going to try this vegan thing out and see how it goes. And before that, I'd gone back and forth between uh, being vegan and vegetarian and flexitarian and doing all the things uh, before I completely weaned myself off. <laughs> but I would say about maybe a year and a half into being a strict vegan uh, was when an opportunity came up to compete on a bodybuilding stage. And at that point, I, you know, I had set a goal for myself to... Uh, get in the best shape of my life by the time I turned 40. And I was coming close to turning 40. So I see. Yeah. Yeah. The bodybuilding competition kind of uh, put some parameters around a uh, time frame around. Okay. I have to actually do something uh, to get there um, and really help me focus. Um, and so I thought it was going to be a one and done type thing. <laughs> I'd say six months before my 40th birthday, I competed for the first time in the World World Natural um, Vegan Bodybuilding Championships, <laughs> which was the first ever. So it was like this history making type thing. Um, and I was like, oh, gosh, I'm not going to like this. It felt very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. Just the whole process, getting a tan, uh, you know, drying out or trying to dry out and doing all kinds of crazy things to do that, uh, to make your body look as fit as possible. Uh, but I stepped on stage and fell in love. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, what was it like stepping on stage for that first time? Was it an adrenaline mm -hmm. rush or? Well, I have extreme stage fright <laughs> so <laughs> i was pushing myself out of my comfort zone for sure uh there there was a lot of adrenaline 
uh, there, you know, the nerves were definitely there. Um, but once I got on stage, it was like, I, I had practiced for so long that I kind of knew what to do, or I thought I knew what to do. I <laughs> realized later I knew nothing, <laughs> but at the time you really don't know what you don't know. So, um, yeah, it was, it was kind of surreal. Uh, and being able to do it with other vegans was really special for me. Um, yeah, so it, it was great. <laughs> I loved awesome. It. <laughs> so, yeah. So like, I think when people generally think of bodybuilding, they just think pack as much muscle on as you can and go on stage. Right. But I, I get the feeling it's more nuanced than that. Would that be right? Fair to say? Definitely. Um, and I, I get this a lot with, with guys who uh, they just think, Oh, I just need to build, build, build. And so they work really hard on the, gym aspect of it um but there's also the nutrition side of things um that you really have to dial in and figure out what works for you uh and then there's the the actual stage presentation um which i think a lot of folks just kind of forget about <laughs> um where you you know you have to learn the poses you have to execute them properly you have to be able to hold them it's it's truly a sport when you get on stage. It's not easy, even though people may look at it and say, oh, that this looks easy. They're just flexing. But if you try to flex for, you know, 15 minutes straight, it's it's quite taxing. So it's, there's definitely um, some conditioning that you have to do on that end as well. Um, and to be able to, you know, to be able to control your body to create the illusion that you're probably bigger than you are is, okay, uh, yeah. is one thing that people, yeah, I think miss the mark on or they think it's easy uh, and it's, it's really not. <laughs> how does it look like, like the year of a bodybuilder? Because obviously you're reaching these peaks. Um, how often can you do that in a year? Kind of bring your body down in weight, but still look super ripped. How many times a year can you do that? You know, okay, so I kind of, I think I tested the limits of it in 2023. <laughs> I competed in five shows, <laughs> which was the most I'd ever competed in a 12, well, basically a 12-month period. Um, and I would say my, my approach was I just want to continue to get better at each show. So I wasn't trying to look my best the first show my goal is to look the best at the end of my season, which is my final show, the world championships for, um, for the federation I compete in, which is the world natural bodybuilding federation. And so I was able to peak and look good and do well throughout the season. <laughs> but I would say I brought my best package that last show of the year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess, yeah, everything would have been tuned in and you've, done a lot of trial and error to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And I, I think awesome. what helped also was I had some, some time between the shows. So I did have, you know, I was able to take small diet breaks, uh, sometimes take a, you know, a week off from actually training to let my body recover from trying to peak and then, you know, got back into it. So. Awesome. So, so yeah, we're friends on Instagram now <laughs> and yes. you probably saw that I, I put some requests out um, to see what people really wanted to know when it comes to a bodybuilder who's vegan because they are quite rare. <laughs> sure. But just before we go into those questions, because some of them revolve around training and nutrition, that kind of thing. But I would like to hear a little bit more about your vegan journey and how... <laughs> how you became vegan, what was the catalyst behind that change? And I want to know, was there any hesitation there? Um, because I know for a lot of people before they go vegan, they have preconceived ideas that, you know, you can't get protein, that kind of thing. Yeah. So what was it like for you? Uh, so let's see, this story goes back about 10 years. It's probably wow, when okay. it started. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just, it was a long transition for me. So about 10 years ago, I say I was 34. Um, I had a health scare. Uh, I went in for a physical and I was told that, you know, my blood pressure was high and that my, um, that I was borderline pre-diabetic, um, that my cholesterol was high. And the doctor just recommended that I cut out carbs. So I did that for a while, <laughs> which didn't change anything in, um, my, with my health issues. Um, and I started training and uh, or just trying to work out. You know, I started being more active at that point, um, trying to mitigate these issues. Uh, and over time, I had, you know, seen different things about veganism, vegetarianism. Um, and I watched, uh, I would say maybe three years after that, I watched uh, Forks Over Knives with a friend of mine who was already vegetarian. And um, and I was like, okay, well, I was like, I could try to be a vegetarian. But I can't give up eggs. I can't give up cheese. Those are two things I have to have. You know, it felt like I was addicted to them. Now that I think back on how, how I talked about it all. <laughs> um, and so I did that for a bit four months um, and went on a business trip to an uh, area in the U.S. Uh, in Louisiana. So I was in New Orleans. And it's very hard to be a vegetarian in New Orleans, especially when you're just visiting. So I didn't know where things were. I was kind of in uh, uh, the French borders of New Orleans. And so they had all these seafood restaurants. And I got tired of eating salads. <laughs> and so <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to introduce seafood back into my diet. Uh, and then once I returned home from there, I was able to, uh, or I was, I did the flexitarian thing. So I cooked vegetarian at home, but wouldn't restrict myself when I went out with friends. And I found that, you know, food was very, there's like the social aspect of food, you know? So whenever you, yeah, you go out with friends or you're with family for holidays and things like, like that, it, it, there was always this pressure to eat, <laughs> eat certain things. Um, and I, you know, went back and forth with that for a while. And I would say on my, my brother's birthday, he turned 30. Uh, he had a backyard barbecue themed birthday and everything had meat in it. Uh, even the veg what was supposed to be the vegetable dishes had meat. <laughs> I got so sick. Um, from that that uh, party, that I was like, you know what, I am, I I need to just cut meat out, um, and decided pretty much a few months after that that I was going to try to go vegan for a month. Um, I wanted to cut out dairy and all of those other things uh, just to see how I felt. Did that and felt amazing. It was like I'm never going back. <laughs> <laughs> amazing that's um yeah that's really powerful that it was kind of nudging you this over is. a certain period of time and then you finally kind of gave into it and yeah went for it um, yes you mentioned your family and like social gatherings that kind of thing how has that been for you being a vegan like how do your family and friends kind of have they changed or are they took anything on from you and your bodybuilding you know um not really <laughs> <laughs> i so i it has been something that i've gotten very used to um and i think it actually has helped me with my bodybuilding because before becoming a bodybuilder i was bringing my own food to family functions because i knew there would be little to nothing that i could eat um and so I had already kind of gone through that whole process with friends and family of being able to bring my own food um, and be the odd person out uh, <laughs> to the point of where now it's just expected. Um, I will say that for a period of time, my family did really kind of focus on going plant-based. 
Um, unfortunately, it was after my mom had uh, a heart attack, and her doctors recommended that um, that she go on a plant based diet. Um, and so that kind of stuck around for a while, uh, which I think it does with you know those types of things when your health is concerned. It's like an initial shock, and then you know, oh, I have to do all the right things. But I think that's fleeting. For most people, we tend to go back to our habits. That's why, you know, people know that smoking is bad for you, but they still do it. <laughs> um, so I, I needed something additional to hold on to and to hang this whole vegan hat on, basically. Um, and for me, that became educating myself about animal agriculture, its impact on the environment, its impact on the animals. And not being able to reconcile why certain animals are considered pets versus others that are used for clothes and food and what have you. So um, that moral dilemma became the basically the thing that really kept me going down yeah. this road. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um... That's a really good point that you made is, you know, that connection, not just to our health, um, with what can be conceived as like a plant-based diet, but also the environmental impact and what actually happens to animals. How, is there anything that you didn't know before when you were trying veganism that kind of lit that spark in you and was like, okay, wow, this is not just about health. This is about so much more. Uh, so yeah, it, when <laughs> I, so the friend that I, uh, who introduced me to bodybuilding, uh, he and I would have like these conversations about things and it, it just created this whole thing of where I was just like questioning everything and wondering why do we do things that we do? You know, is it something that is just <laughs> something that you know, society tells you, okay, this is how it's done. And so we do it. And why don't we question those things? And um, being able to think about how things change, like, you know, I, in my own experience from not my personal experience, but my ancestors in this country and how we were viewed um, and how that's and so in many ways changed. <laughs> we still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> um, but being able to understand how all the things connect um, and thinking about how they all connect, you know, so there were injustices done to my people. Um, there are injustices being done to animals. Uh, there's, you know, injustices happening all around the world. And how do I, as an individual, do my part to make sure that I'm not participating in that or I'm speaking out about it. Um, and for me, it starts with the plate. It's a very good point. I think that's a famous, there's a famous quote in there somewhere about peace starts <laughs> on your plate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, that's really profound. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, how has it been um, in terms of, you're based in California, is that right? Yes. How is California for, for vegans in general? Is it is it a pretty good place to be or? You know, it well, Cal, uh, much of the agri agricultural type things that happen in the U.S. kind of happen here in California. So it is a great place to be. Um, I would say, depending on where you live, because it, it, it is a large state. Uh, it could be its own country, basically. Um, so depending on where you are, it could be a, more of a challenge for some people. I live uh, in the Bay Area. It's close to San Francisco, Oakland. Uh, so we have some major hubs here. Um, and so being a vegan isn't very hard for me. I have a Whole Foods like walking distance from where I live with tons of fresh, fresh vegetables and fruits and things. So it, it hasn't been hard for me at all. <laughs> nice. That's really cool to hear. Um... Yeah, I had a feeling that California would be quite a, a hot spot for vegans. 
Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so now I, I just want to go into a little bit about your training. Um, one of the questions that we had that I thought was a fair question for, for someone to ask, especially if they're not necessarily involved in gym culture and bodybuilding, that kind of thing. It was, um, how does bodybuilding training differ from other sorts of training like powerlifting? Is there a difference in lifts and in intensity? And if so, what is the difference? Oh, that's, that's actually an excellent question. Um, from my experience, uh, bodybuilding, the purpose of lifts, like you do a lot of the same lifts in bodybuilding and powerlifting, but the purpose is different. So, you know, the, the goal or the objective in powerlifting is to move the weight. The goal with bodybuilding is to build the muscle. So the focus with bodybuilding is very much, you know, I'm, I'm contracting my muscles to actually move the weight as opposed to using things like momentum and other things that may help with powerlifting. Um, it's, it's very much like a, it, 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 your, the repetitions are much higher. A lot of powerlifters, they're going as heavy as possible. They're doing one reps <laughs> or one rep. <laughs> Uh, whereas with bodybuilding, you're going for hypertrophy. So you're trying to really kind of, uh, tear and break down the muscle. So you're doing, mul you're do lifting heavy, but not probably not as heavy as a power lifter. And you're really, uh, trying to break down the muscle. So you're doing multiple repetitions mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah. So in terms of power lifting and bodybuilding, they might look the same right but they sure. they have two totally different goals yes what and you mentioned in there about rep range where power lifters might be doing one to two reps what would um in your experience be a good rep range for someone wanting to build as much muscle as fast as possible um let's see so i i would say anywhere between the six and 10, 12 rep range. Uh, and that's pretty much where I keep most of my training uh, within that range. Some, sometimes for some things, I will go a little bit higher uh, up to like 15 reps. But yeah, I try to keep it between that six oh, to okay. 12 rep range. And, and what kind of, how many sets would that be? So for me, I typically, uh between four and six sets uh but usually around okay. four sets yeah yeah and it's very concentrated so uh i would say it's it's very when i think of bodybuilding the lifts are very controlled they're slow they're it's it's just a whole different mindset so it's it's you know you're you're thinking of your body or the muscle that you're trying to really impact as a machine and just using that. So the rest of your body, it's very static. Um, so it, it, if you see it, it, it doesn't, it may not look like people are working hard when they're actually doing it, <laughs> but the amount of control and concentration that's required is, it's just very different from what I can see visually for bodybuilding compared to something like powerlifting. Hmm, awesome. Okay, cool. Um, another question, not as intense, but still kind of along along the training route, was what is your best lift? I'm not sure whether they mean favorite lift or, um, huh? <laughs> yeah, the best lift for bodybuilding. So maybe if you answer both. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, um, I would say my best lift is one that I actually don't really like very much <laughs> but i have to do it um is the squat um i feel like that it's even though the legs are like the focus of that it feels like it's very much it requires your whole body to actually do it it's a compound movement um and i find it you know i for me i'm tall i'm uh i think 
it'll be 180 384 centimeters <laughs> oh, wow um, i think so for six our, foot one our british viewers foot that's three. like yeah six foot two yeah <laughs> yes okay <laughs> yes that's how we do it here in the United States. so um yeah uh so yeah it it's what was i saying so the the squat is the one that i for me i have long legs so you know, building up the legs has been really important for me uh, to really kind of create that balance between the top, uh, my upper body and my lower body. Uh, but I found that squats really, really help with that. And being able to execute them effectively for what I'm trying to do um, has been really, really helpful. My favorite lift uh, is probably the bench press. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i think that's probably true for most guys too <laughs> i think so yeah 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 chest day is always like you know the, the thing that guys are just like ready to do um yeah so yeah i would say that 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 is probably my favorite list <laughs> okay cool yeah I, I think that was a good question so yeah thank you that was a great for question. that one <laughs> yeah um Another one, uh, and I think this is kind of one that would be really good for you to answer. It's kind of your your niche with veganism and bodybuilding is, what does your everyday diet look like as a vegan bodybuilder? I think this is the million dollar question that everyone wants to know, really. <laughs> yes. Um, it's Really, it's probably pretty boring for most people, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and that that is the key, I would say, with very true. getting a diet is being able to find things that work towards your goals, but also that you enjoy eating. Um, nice. And so for me, I would say, you know, I wake up in the morning and I typically will have um, either oat bran cereal or I make a protein muffin, uh, or I will have, there's uh, this cereal, uh, this Catalina cereal. It's a good mix of uh, carbs and protein. Um, and then I'll have a protein shake on it just to kind of give me, give myself a little bit of extra protein. And I eat, so you also have to figure out what works for your lifestyle. I work from home. So I have my kitchen access to my kitchen all day. <laughs> um, so I eat six times a day and I will, yeah, I'll prep my meals, but basically every two and a half, three hours, I'm eating something and it's not, not always big, big meals, but, uh, it's, it's something. <laughs> um, and so that's breakfast. Um, and then typically I go to the gym after that because I have my carbs in me go to the gym, train. After the gym, I'd come home and then I'd have um, a meal of some kind of plant-based protein, uh, a carb source, and a um, and a healthy fat. Usually that's something like, um, I don't know if they have it in the UK, but we have this product called Garen Chicken. Uh, it's a soy-based chicken uh, item. And it's delicious. <laughs> it comes in the freezer section. I just throw it in the air fryer. Super easy to make as well. Um, either that or I'd switch that out with um, uh, tofu. We have a fava bean tofu here that is pure protein, which is great. Uh, yeah. Or or I also make my own seitan. So I with those three items are usually in the rotation. Uh, as a protein source for me. Uh, as far as carbs go, I typically, I really love sweet potatoes and we have these white sweet potatoes here in California um, that I can devour. And basically I just throw them in a the pot and, um, and I boil them, <laughs> boil them down until I can mash them. There's often enough mash and then I put it in containers and I take, a portion of it uh, based on how much I need for that particular meal. And I'll eat that with my protein and I'll have sometimes edamame. I'll add edamame to that as well. 
And then my healthy fat source is typically avocados. And we have avocados year round here. So I'll eat avocados. And that that is typically what I'll have for the rest of my meals out of the day. I see. Yes. I'm I'm starting to understand you you said earlier that nutrition plays such a big role. Um it seems like you're very organized when it comes to your meals. Yes. You you actually have to be if you want to be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it comes to bodybuilding, yes. Um mm -hmm. and I, I do some travel for work as well. So I have to be super organized um when see, it comes to yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, we had one question that asks about, um, a calorie deficit that you get towards competitions. Um, mm -hmm. just for the benefit of the viewers, I want to share a photo of Jamal on stage just to see how, how we're looking. So we'll put that up now. Um, but yeah, if you could talk to us just a little bit about what, what a calorie deficit is and is it is it easy is it difficult um what does it entail okay great yeah um so <laughs> i i had to learn this uh throughout the process so i've been competing for five years now i would say the first four years i did it on my own <laughs> but now i have a coach uh who has been who has like over 40 years in the game. She's, you know, a two-time world champion and she's, she's amazing. Um, but basically a caloric deficit for those who don't know is, uh, um, when you're taking in less calories than what you're actually burning, um, through activity and exercise and those types of things. And I would say I, my, my deficits when I first started, um were really high so i would basically starve myself oh, wow. i don't do that anymore <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't not. do that at all anymore um my deficits are typically probably so a maintenance is where your body weight basically stays the same uh, as <laughs> where your your energy expenditure and your what you take in are equal and I would say I probably divvy a hundred calories over that and a hundred calories under for on my on the food uh, end of things. And what really helps me create the, the deficit um, beyond that is uh, is activity. So I'll do cardio. I'll go walk on a treadmill. I'll do stairs. Those types of things. So that's really what's helping me create my deficit. Wow giving me enough nutrition to maintain and even build, continue to build as I go through my season. Um, yeah, so it, it can be hard, especially when, well, it's for, to get stage ready and get stage lean, it's a different animal <laughs> um, than just trying to be like beach body ready. Um, so there it is, it does get a little bit tighter, um, uh, I do something called carb cycling. I would say, you know, sometimes six weeks out from a show where I'll reduce my carb intake for, uh, let's say four or five days out of the week. And then I will carb load the last couple of days of the week just to kind of try to fill up my muscle bellies again. And that, that process can play with your head. <laughs> um, you know, if you're used to getting carbs, regularly uh, the absence of them can be a bit of a challenge uh, but you know it's, it's for me i've always told myself it's only for a short period of time that's true and i'll be i'll look great on stage <laughs> and then i'll be done i'll go back to normal <laughs> yeah I, th I think you know the the physique that you achieve when you're on stage when you're on stage i think that's a great form of activism you know um and sometimes that's the price you pay for the um, demonstrating what you, what you can do as a vegan and what you can achieve. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I'm aware that we're kind of coming to uh, the end of the time, but there are still a couple of questions that I, I really want to ask you um, before, before we let you go about your day. Um, one is, 
in the time that you've been lifting, almost 10 years, I think you said, have you seen a change in perception um, amongst the bodybuilding community towards veganism? Um, so I would say yes. Um, That's good to hear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I actually get, I get a lot of questions about it. I think people are very interested in it. I do caution people, you know, I think sometimes they think that, oh, you know, if it's vegan, it must be healthy. That's not necessarily true. <laughs> um, I think with bodybuilding, you have to uh, look for quality sources of protein, just like someone on a carnivore, carnivore diet or omnivore diet. Um, you have to look for things like quality protein. Um, you have to look for quality carbs and quality fats. You can't just eat anything. Um, I was selling a client of mine. It's like, you can't outrun a bad diet. It's like, just because you hit your macro targets that we set doesn't mean <laughs> that you're going to get the results that you want. Um, so doing things like trying to stay away from processed foods where you can, which I, I try to minimize. I, I try to throw in some, you know, raw foods into my diet as well. Um, just to try to make sure that I'm trying to keep things on the healthy end of things. But yeah, I will say overall, uh, because of the success that I've had, um, I get a lot of questions. Like people are like, Oh, how are you doing that? Um, it must be hard. And then I just explained to them, it's like, it's the same as what everybody else is doing. It's just that my sources of things like protein come from plants because I believe that plants have all the protein you need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I really like what you said there. You can't outrun a bad diet. I think that's a, a great quote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so last question that I want to ask you is if you could say anything to your non-vegan self, what would you say? Why did you start this earlier? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's, that's my only regret. Um, mm -hmm. Or I, I, would, I would tell my 34-year-old my self that you can do this. Uh, you're, you're, you know, you're not going to lose anything. I think that was my fear. Even though I wasn't, you know, 10 years ago, I wasn't very fit. Uh, I was, I was kind of what I consider skinny fat. So I was, I didn't look, I wasn't heavy. Like outwardly, if people saw me, they would think, oh, he's, you know, he's normal. <laughs> um, but I didn't look anywhere like what I look like now. Um, I didn't have the muscle. I was probably the same weight. But my body composition over those years has definitely changed uh, quite a bit. So, yeah, it's I would tell myself, don't don't be afraid. It's uh, it's it's a worthwhile journey. <laughs> Brilliant. I think that is um, a really nice thing to end it on. Um, it's worth a worthwhile journey. Brilliant. Well, thank you for your time, Jamal. And um yeah, this has been really fun. I've definitely learned a lot. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, I hope you feel that you've got something out of this. I hope um, Jamal managed to answer some of your questions because he definitely did for me. And be sure to tune in for the next episode of the Viva podcast. Thank you.